Hey, George. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad, not too bad. And you? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. I um, I got rid of that bot. I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's that's cool. Um, so Patrick won't be able to join today. Um, and he asked me to kind of take uh, let's say ownership of the meeting um, of the call today. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen, and we can quickly go through um, some updates here. Um, let's see. Is it visible? Yeah. OK, cool. Um, all right, so for everybody that's going to tune in later uh, into the recording, uh, this is the Aries VCX community call of 9th of March uh, 2023. We have our antitrust policy here. Um, feel free to review it, and let's take a moment. Uh, so it, it's displayed here. And okay, so let's get on, let's get down to um, some some updates and the agenda. Um, now, in advance, I will say that I'm not uh, necessarily familiar with everything that has been done here, so we're probably going to explore them together. Um, I know that there have been some uh, renamings of some verify methods. Uh, I believe Patrick took care of this. Um, as far as I know, there are mostly some renames. Um, apparently, there were some updates, some methods added to uh, libvcx4. Um, yeah, this has also been merged. I believe it was merged just yesterday. Um, so that's some, some good stuff from Patrick. Um, apart from that, I'm familiar with the attributes uh, getting cleared. Let's see. Okay, so apparently there were some utility methods added to interacting with the ledger. Um, I believe this is sort of related to um, um, to an issue regarding the service endpoints, where um, in, in some old notation, they were uh, not prefixed, and we kind of need them to be prefixed now. So um, it's pretty much what the, I could be wrong, but uh, my assumption is that this is what this is about. Um, and, now I know about this. Uh, this is some work from, from you, George, uh, about the type state pattern for holder. Um, maybe you could actually take the lead here a bit and uh, I don't know, explain, I don't know, what your, um, how's your experience with the type state pattern, I guess, first of all, um, if you're encountering any sort of difficulties or if you feel everything is flowing, um, you know, naturally or organically in a way yeah um so yeah i guess i was a big fan of the connection uh type state pattern uh it's very nice to use uh compared to the old api um so yeah as we talked about in the discord um one of the next logical uh i guess uh patterns or or protocols to target with this type state pattern is the holder handler. Um, so yeah, I've just been working on applying the same sort of pattern from connection to holder, um, where I guess uh, one of the main differences between holder and connection is that the connection type state pattern represents both roles in the protocol, invitee and inviter, um, whereas this is just the holder uh, as a part of the issuance v1 uh, protocol um, and yeah as we talked about in the discord uh, the reasoning for that is uh, because there isn't really a lot of commonality between holder and issuer uh, in this protocol um, so 
I believe it makes sense to have them separated. Uh, so this PR is just targeting the holder type state and then uh, the issuer could be done next. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty straightforward uh, thus far, sort of just following the pattern from connection. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, yeah, there, there were sort of a few questions that I ran into um, as I was going along with it. Okay. Is there um, anything worth discussing now? Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, um, I just had a couple questions sure. in the comment that I left or uh, the description at the top. Um, okay. I'm not sure if you've seen these, but yeah, I was wondering with the connection type state, it sort of made sense just to replace the connection handler completely because it was such a new uh, API. Um, but I don't believe that would be the case with the holder handler. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what the best approach would be in terms of, yeah, having both, supporting both or replacing it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, essentially, I guess the, the goal is to basically replace the old one. Um, so I think that's what we should be striving for. Um, it would require some work uh, across the like the, the entire workspace, I guess. Um, but the idea would be to sort of deprecate uh, the older pattern in favor of this um, type state pattern. Um, now, regarding the second point here, this is a very, very good question. And uh, this is where rather the idea I'm going to mention now is not even implemented in the connection protocol itself. Mm -hmm. um, but the so to be able to change the state from from one or to be able to modify the type from one connection or one one state to another in the state machine, um, we basically take the entire structure uh, we like with full ownership. Um, now, in cases when it can diverge to multiple states, then like in this particular case where you have this failed state and some just progression of the state machine, the failed state basically acts as an error. Um, so what I would do and what I plan to do in, in the connection protocol as well, once I get to revisit it, um, is to basically like, let's, let's take this uh, method, the send request method as an example. So this can fail, so it can return an error, and we generally return a result here. So my goal would be to make the failable, the fallable state, or the, the error representing state, an error itself, because you can do that. You can implement error for this, and basically treat it appropriately. So you could, as a result type from the send request method, you would get the result holder um, request sent, so that would be the okay variant, and the error variant would be holder failed. And that would be my idea. Um, mm -hmm. Now, apart from that, um, to kind of take advantage of, so because we take the, the value, um, yeah, we basically pass that the state machine by value and not by a reference or anything like that. Um, in the connection protocol, like the current implementation, um, especially like where it's exposed in places like libvcx, um, when the state machine is stored in some sort of structure, we clone it out of there, we do something with it, and if it progresses, we store, we store back the, the new value. Now, it would be even better if instead of like, sort of dissecting the operations in a way where if something fails, so apart from this like failed failure state that a state machine can get into, but I don't know, just any sort of error, like unpacking a message fails or packing a message fails. So any anything like that, um, if we could design the method so that if we get an error from something like this, and it's not just a state, we get any error. 
then maybe we could design it in a way where the result type, like the result would be the new, uh, the advanced state machine, but the error type would be uh, like a, a two part containing the old state and the resulting error from the operation. Meaning that the old state, if it was passed by value, we can like say if something fails, we can just uh, bring it back so we don't have to clone stuff all over the place. Um, and this would make it a bit more um, performant in terms of how we handle it uh, because we no longer lose, like if something fails in the state machine at any point uh, and we take it by value, then that means that particular instance is lost. And it would be great to avoid that. Um, but in terms of this failure state that some state machines have, this is what I'd like to do to basically transform this into an error. And because that's sort of like a finite state. So it's just for representation um, motives that you would want to have it like that, just be a state of the holder. So you'd have holder failed. Uh, but that would, in fact, be some sort of an error. Mm. It's probably going to make uh, more sense um, when an implementation is done. Um, I don't know if you're going to be ahead of me with the uh, the holder implementation um, and how how advanced you are with it. I didn't get the chance to review it. Uh, I generally, I know it's it might be my personal preference, but I don't really like reviewing stuff, um, you know, twenty times as they get developed. I I, I feel like it would be more comfortable for both the developer and the reviewer if the developer could say just adding a comment somewhere hey this is ready for review or something like that so that because you can change your mind like even if you have some implementation you might realize uh you know the next day that hmm, i can do this better and you go ahead and do it um so yeah, i didn't really take that much of a, of a close look at it but um if you feel like it's in a reviewable state to say so well, i can definitely um you know do a more thorough review um, maybe one thing that I wanted to ask you was, how do you feel about just working with a holder uh, and leaving the issuer aside in terms of the of the protocol? How do you think that that will play out? Um, like, do you think do you see this as as a problem, or um, did you consider that? I'm, I'm strictly speaking because. Um, like I, I, as I said, I'm not familiar with the protocol implementation, uh, so I, I don't necessarily know how they are stored, how the state machines are stored, and um, like if they are, the issuers and the holders are stored together. But my assumption is that they're not because they were different types before as well. Um, but did you did you face uh, any sort of issues by just handling this one part uh, of the like one side, one actor of the protocol? Yeah, no, not not really. Um, yeah, the, the states that they both have in the original state machine is quite separate from each other. Mm -hmm. So there's not really much sharing going on. Okay, fair enough. Yes, yeah, so it's enough. it's not not too bad really. All right, I, I was curious as you as you know probably the the connection one is they're more intertwined, um, mm. so it it made sense even before and even now. Uh, with the type state pattern to kind of consider them and treat them together. Um, there's a lot of commonality there. So there's a lot of common stuff. Um, and the states are, are not that different, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, I assume that this makes more sense uh, as a holder. You are kind of, uh, you have your own set of operations. And as, a issue, as an issuer, you have your own uh, set of operations. OK, I was just, I was just curious again. I, um, basically doing my research right now yeah yeah um uh, on the uh on the failure states um mm -hmm. i think something that patrick was uh sort of proposing uh, at least my interpretation of it was that um basically it should say the send request method it should return a result um but i guess uh not not this exact proposal but the 2b proposal um, but yeah, it should return a result, uh, and it shouldn't, you know, try to force itself into the failed state immediately in a way. Um, 
and then it's up to the consumer for how they handle the error of that result, whether they want right. that error to, you know, send them into the error state where they, you know, send off the problem report or the problem report and then are into the mm. whole the failed state, which I think makes sense because some of the failures you could potentially get while sending a request don't necessarily warrant that you send off a problem report and, you know, end the protocol. If you go what True. I mean, like a, mm -hmm. like a wallet access fail, uh, say if yeah, you accidentally issue. plug in the wrong wallet. Fair enough. Or, yes. or a slight network error. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a very good point. And that's exactly why I was saying that right now, the, the methods, um, I'm, again, I'm, I'm speaking more, uh, related to the connection protocol, uh, which I worked on, but the methods, mm -hmm. Um, and the transitions seemed a bit beefy, like a lot of things were happening in there and especially a lot of different uh, reasons that can lead to failure, um, where some of them were not related to the protocol itself. So mm -hmm. that's exactly what, what I was suggesting about having some sort of like sort of separating the operations in a way where um, like failures can be failures not related to the protocol would get propagated um, without interfering with the state machine, um, mm -hmm. and the the only like the failed state would result from the uh, let's say I don't know last operation or or stuff like that. Maybe to give you an example of what I have in mind, um, I don't know. You can think about um, in the connection protocol, you get the connection request and you have to generate a response from it. So let's say that for whatever reason, you generate a response and you have to sign it and that signature process fails. And that means you essentially, uh, you know, just the entire thing crumbles uh, where that might actually be a retriable operation, I believe. So, mm -hmm. In cases like that, what if instead of handling all of that into that transition code from one state to another, we could have methods that don't consume the state machine. They just take it by reference or stuff like that. And they provide you with a response, like a, an actual response built, ready to be used. And then you pass that response into the transition. So this limits the, uh, you know, the failure, the failures that can occur. Uh, when transitioning the state um, and consuming the state, more importantly. Mm. So that's pretty much what I what I have in mind. And I guess it kind of also falls into place with the uh, the messages refactor, which we're going to talk about shortly, um, in the sense that the message is going to be um, composable and decomposable. So we have to handle parts of the message in, in different places and in different ways. So then when you only work like on a, from a protocol perspective, um, you work with a subset of that response. Like if you have a timing decorator or some, some other stuff like that, um, that's not part of the actual state machine. It doesn't really interfere with its functionality. Um, so, a lot of these things will happen outside the state machine, but they can still hinder uh, or even just seize the entire um, the entire flow. I don't know if you get a thread message and you don't find the thread for it, uh, or the thread is built incorrectly. I don't know. Like a lot of things can happen that are not related to the actual protocol specific content, um, mm -hmm. and they would be handled outside. But yeah, I guess it's a, it's a bit of a like it requires some some thinking. I'm um, just you know throwing the idea out there um, that this is how I would see it, and it's not it's not yet as clear for me either. Um, it's gonna make much more sense when I actually get to implement it and get another have another go at the connection protocol with the new messages, um, so that I can actually I can actually see how it all you know plays out and falls into place. Uh, but that's the general idea. Yeah. Um, 
if, if you can answer this, how far away do you think the messages work is from being complete? Um, I was about to get to that. Um, I guess we're going to skip the SQL dependency and get right to the messages rework. We're, talk, we're going to talk about this after. I guess it's no big deal. Um, and Raphael also joined. So hello, Raphael. Uh, I'm sorry we were caught up in the discussion here, but welcome. Hello, thank you. Um, OK, so about a messages rework, it's actually not far off. Um, pretty much everything was implemented apart from the protocol registry, uh, which I'm working on right now. It's almost done. There are just a couple of things to figure out. It's going to be a bit of a, like not really the optimal or best or ideal implementation, um, but it's also simply because um, this is this is starting to be quite a like it's it's a huge PR and there's a lot of I don't know cognitive burden when it comes to uh, thinking about it and I'm sure you it's, you're gonna have a fun time reviewing it as well. <laughs> um, but I I am really counting on you. I'm gonna have multiple passes at it as well. Uh, but it would help at least in even from just the documentation perspective. Um, you know. Pairs of fresh eyes will definitely see things differently than I do. So especially if you feel like something is not, um, if you don't understand like a, a particular piece of code in like less than 10 seconds from looking at it, let me know and I can comment it or feel free to add a comment as well. Um, but yes, there's a, there's a lot going on. So in terms of that protocol registry, uh, I'm not sure if there's something added just yet. Yes, there is. Um, the overall idea that um, that this derives from is, uh, on one hand, we want to have um, a list of protocols that the agent uh, basically supports. So. We want to know exactly, hey, what capabilities do you have? And we would have something like this. And this would be a static thing, um, at least as a baseline, um, which you can alter in a, whenever you I know, create a disclose message through the discovery features, discovery features protocol and, and stuff like that. Um, so you, you can modify it. But ultimately, this is the baseline. So this is the protocol. These are the protocols that we support. The long-term idea would be to control this by some feature flags so that you can choose what uh, you want to have compiled into your agent when you build it. Um, and I'm thinking about instead of having this as a lazy static, like lazily initialized hash map, because this is what it is, um, I'm thinking about having some sort of code generation in place so that it would be even uh, more Kind of programmatically um, determined, but that's as I said, like in the in the longer run. Um, right now, I kind of want to see it functional. So this is one part of having the the protocol registry for the discovered features um, protocol, and then the other part is this would aid with uh, semantic versioning in terms of minor versions or protocol selection when you get a message because the semver rules um, declare that if you support let's say you support the basic message version 1.0 1.1 and 1.2 and you get the 1.3 so that's a minor version 3 and it shouldn't be too different from minor version 2 uh, the rules declare that you should basically fall back to version 1.2 or whatever is the highest version that you support which is smaller than the protocol version you got. And this is another thing that this will help us with. Um, there's still some, some stuff to be implemented regarding that. That's basically what's left. Um, but essentially, that's, uh, that's the other goal. Because having this list um, in, in, the, um, in the binary, right now it's runtime uh, generated, but especially having it compile time generated, um, would ensure that the correct protocol is always going to be picked and you're going to fall back um, sort of transparently 
uh, you're going to get a, a problem report. So the other part of this is that through this mechanism, if you fall back or if you don't support the protocol or, or something like that, you would end up with a problem report that you can send to the other party. Um, and optionally a message, like if, if you fall back to a version you support, you get a message and that um, protocol version and the problem report so you can let the other party know that, hey, I'm not supporting 1.3, I'm gonna fall back to 1.2. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the overall idea. Um, yeah, so not, not that far off, apart from this, everything else is done. Um, and I am actually looking forward to getting this merged. Um, it will take, it will still take some time. So once the protocol registry is implemented, uh, there's basically a lot of tests and documentation that still need to be written. Um, and I, I guess I'm also gonna have to discuss this with Patrick, but maybe you guys can also provide your two cents. I'm thinking, so initially, uh, I guess the plan was to retrofit the messages, like the refactored messages into, um, Aries VCX and all the places that it's being used. Um, but I realized that that would be a bit like quite a lot of work. And I'm thinking, I, I propose the idea of, um, I guess like retrofitting it or, or taking the type state machines one by one and sort of doing the, those together with the messages refactor, but that would also be a lot of work. Um, so what if instead we, keep it as a separate crate for now. So it coexists with the current messages crate and we implement it gradually into Aries VCX and all the other crates. Basically so that, um, you know, like you, George, you're working on, the, on that holder um, state machine. So when the messages crate, when the messages to crate will be merged, you could start using it um, it would still imply some like using it in, across um, multiple places, but it would be a, m a more iterative approach um, rather than retrofitting everything into the current code and then refactoring the state machines. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah I think that makes sense. Um, is that is that not similar to the approach of uh, you know, incrementally doing it with the type state patterns. Well, I guess I guess it is. Um, I, but I, I'm when it comes to the state machines, um, like you're taking one protocol at a time or one component, one state machine at a time. Like you, you're handling the handler, the holder. Sorry, you're you're doing the holder right now. Hmm. Um, and like it essentially makes sense to refactor the state machine and use the refactored one in place of the old one. Uh, yeah. But it's also a bit more contained. Like it's only about one specific thing, one state machine for one protocol. Uh, whereas this pretty much spawns, spans across uh, everything else. Um, so, like taking taking down the old messages crate and putting this in place uh, in in one go, it's still going to be a lot of work. Mm. Um, and I'm just that's basically what I'm what I'm proposing to maybe um, merge this in as an uh, as an additional crate in the beginning, and as we gradually replace the implementations from the the older crate with the new one, um, then as we ultimately uh, pretty much implemented everywhere and the, the old crate is not being used anymore, then I guess we can deprecate it and uh, remove it. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, I mean, it's, uh, again, it's another idea we can, we can discuss uh, maybe in the, in the next week's call as well. I don't know exactly um, if this would, uh, would even be in a merge. It probably will be in a, mergeable state by then, but uh, we don't have to, to make a decision right now. But yeah, um, so not it's not going to take long. Um, it's finally coming to an end. And uh, I, at least I am glad to see the light at the end of the tunnel because it's been a lot of work. 
Um, and small things like the, the protocol registry, like a better implementation of it can be done again, iteratively. Um, and it's also, there's a high chance that some stuff um, might need to be added, maybe some helper methods or, or any kind of thing like that, uh, which are really hard to uh, think about in, in such a big picture um, without actually implementing um, the messages in a, in a specific protocol. So it's not it's not like it, this is this will be the final state once we merge it, but uh, it's going to be a pretty solid, um, you know, base ground where we can start uh, start adding stuff or even removing stuff if it's unnecessary. I don't think that will be the case, but who knows? Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we can talk about the SQL X version bump. Um, is this okay? This is apparently just a draft. I think I've I've read something about this. Um, don't remember exactly what it messes up, but hmm. oh, cool! I hadn't, hadn't seen this work. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, there was. There's a few sort of conflicting dependencies uh, with, uh, I guess, all of Aries VCX and um, Aries Asca, and they're all coming from libvdr tools, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess this first sort of thing to tackle is this SQLX thing, um, which has previously been using that Git uh, fork of it. Or well, maybe mm -hmm. not for but the specific branch uh, right. of it. Um, and it, yeah, uh, Patrick wasn't super clear on uh, why why we're using that version of SQLX. So I think this is the attempt to stop using it and replace it with the official version. Um, and then, yeah. yeah, the version that comes, the issue that comes after SQLX with Aries Askar is um within ursa uh mm -hmm. it, it's using an older version of zero wires and then that causes some conflicts with ascar which is using a newer version um so it gets I a bit see. messy hmm. do you have any idea where sqlx is being used in aries vcx uh i'm not sure it's a dev dependency um Oh, okay. Yeah, my bad. I didn't notice it. Yeah, it's probably just used for tests. Okay, yeah. that's uh, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I've heard something about some some uh, just version differences. Uh, I wasn't too familiar with it, but I guess it makes sense. Um, I know that, however, like there is a plan to kind of drop libvdr libvdr tools and uh, start using the the newer crates. Um, the the refactor ones um i believe like they're they're split across um multiple crates so it's not one one big thing anymore yeah. um but that's again something uh, um i don't know maybe some not something to think about it too much think about too much right now but uh, maybe consider in the in the future um yeah so that's pretty much the work in progress. Um, Just a question. I'm not familiar. Yeah, sure. Uh, for, for my understanding, so it means that RES uh, V6 uh, is using uh, SQL, 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 and behind the hood, uh, SQLX. I didn't get the, 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 yeah, the link between uh, SQLX and RES V6. It's, it's a development dependency, so it's only okay. used in tests. Uh, probably because like to be able to test everything properly so it's only a dev dependency it's not part of the like as a user you're not going to end up with it um okay it's basically there. Sure about that yeah no well, it's you, definitely you end up yep. with it through the live vdr tools dependency right yeah i guess ultimately um mm -hmm. i assume so is it in live vdr tools though uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe that's the version of the 
indie wallet that we're using based on SQLX. Um, is it in that mm. div? There's a couple like sub crates within the VR tools, so it might be in one of those tumbles. I guess. I guess. So. Yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. 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 It's here. I see. Well, yes. I mean, it's not. Uh, um, not necessarily something we have that much control over, but, and especially not a lot of work we're gonna do on this since we basically plan to deprecate it. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not being used in a VCX as a, as a thing. I, I don't even know why it's being used here, to be honest. Um, I would assume it's also just for testing, but especially since it's just about SQLite. Um, well, it's, I, I believe it's for the Indie wallet that we're using. Um, the the wallet behind PDR tools is an SQL light version of it, um, and okay. I believe that's what we default to when we create an open indie wallet. Okay, so that's basically how the interaction goes with the wallet. Yeah, through SQLX. Okay, and the SQL light uh, front end sort of. Okay. Hmm. Well. Um, yeah, I mean, again, not not that familiar with this, um, but I guess that's uh, that does make sense. Um, in the end, the I guess the uh, again the overall idea is that as a user of Aries VCX, you don't necessarily need to worry about that. Uh, it's basically behind the scenes in terms of communicating with the wallet. Exactly. Um, yeah. So. Um, Regarding upcoming work, I think, again, we kind of have our hands full. Um, you, George, with the holder um, refactor and uh, me on getting the messages uh, refactored done. Um, probably, again, like we've been saying for quite some time now, uh, at least when the messages refactor is done, then we're going to start working on the other uh, state machines. Uh, George went. Uh, I guess is already onto that. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to join, join soon enough. Um, yeah, and uh, there is this mentorship program. Um, I believe there was a list. Maybe this is not it. Mm. Ah, there was a list here um, or somewhere. I, I don't think I have it handy. Um, but there was a list of, of projects that we basically um, had up for the, like listed for the mentorship program. Um, I don't know exactly where it is, so I'm, I'm going to have to look it up. But was it maybe uh, like last, last agenda? I'm not, not sure. Um, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it's here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so there are quite a few ideas here. Um, Patrick mentioned that um, I had a brief chat with him about this and he kind of wanted like to have some sort of ideas that would be a bit more interactive, you know, not have someone that would just write documentation or tests or stuff like that. It would still be a nice thing, um, but I guess it would be, um, nice to offer, I don't know, maybe a, a better or broader learning experience. Um, so there are quite a few ideas here. Um, I added those. The protocol registry was before I, we, I was considering not even doing it um, as of yet, but, or yet, but I, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm gonna have a basic implementation of it. Uh, and I'm gonna modify this to basically list it as an enhancement that could be done. It's a bit more advanced, but um, if anybody picks it up, um, I can definitely guide them through it. And it would, in my opinion, be a fairly nice learning experience in the end. Um, but yeah, feel free to add ideas here if you can think of one um, or review the existing ones. Um, for instance, there's this embedded device series agent. Um, that's not going to happen, at least not anytime soon. Um, and simply because um, in an embedded environment, you're a, a bit more constrained at what we have 
uh, and what we're using in in the in Aries BCX right now. Um, technically, I guess that by setting a global allocator, because that's the main issue, depending on the um, microcontroller that you're using, you could technically um, do something with with the current implementation. But again, that's a, a really abstract idea. Um, so we, it's not like we expect anybody to come in and uh, spin up a, an embedded agent, at least not right now. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's about the mentorship program. Um, I don't remember the all the details. I believe there was a deadline, um, I don't know, about a week or so. Um, I think until the 15th. Um, so yeah, not not really sure um, what the next steps are, um, or if there's some sort of application. I, I believe that um, the, the overall idea was to kind of compile a list of projects that uh, we can have people work on and help them with. Um, and then there will be like a, a committee that mm, selects a couple of these project, projects from all the, all the submissions, from all the uh, implementations and yeah a couple of them would uh, would be up for the up for picking for people that are interested I believe that was the idea but I don't remember the the deadlines uh, that well I think it was the 15th in terms of that uh, project submission so once again if you have any ideas um, something that would be would be useful for the ecosystem uh, feel free to add it here um yeah and that uh, i guess that brings us to the didcom 2 uh 2.0 version um it kind of derived from uh i believe this implementation um which is an implementation of uh didcom v2 um fairly basic one and there's one more uh, for some reason, but ultimately, I, I honestly like this a lot. So I'd like to maybe take a minute to talk about it. I feel like the Didcom v1 protocols and message to, messages structure um, have a lot of, uh, of issues and inconsistencies and just overall some, some design that could be done better. Um, and Didcom v2 comes like probably my favorite part out of it all is that there are no longer, the concept of decorators doesn't exist anymore. They're basically called headers, but they are at the message type, uh, at the message level, um, no longer nested throughout the message. So the parsing is gonna be simpler and the processing is gonna be simpler. Um, and they basically formalized, I, I really invite you to have a look over this if you haven't. Uh, they basically formalized a lot of concepts like attachments, threading, um, Pretty much all you can think about, even out of band messaging. Um, yeah, there are some some protocols uh, already implemented. Uh, I believe this is not ready. It's still in sort of a draft state, um, so there's still things to be figured out. But overall, it looks it looks really good, if you ask me. Um, the the overall implementation is uh, is much simpler. Um, yeah, so. I guess in the future, not sure how, how distant, uh, but we will probably start considering this. I had a look over the current implementations. Um, I think we can, we, can do, uh, we can do better. And I guess one reason that is is simply because we already kind of have a lot of, um, a lot of the infrastructure in place or we'll have it, especially with the new messages create um in terms of like parsing a i don't know a message based on its type and and all that stuff and message destructuring and and all the other things um so yeah i guess we'll see but again it, it's worth uh, taking a look at um sooner or later i believe there will be a transition um at least that's that's what i think right now mm -hmm. um it's is the uh, is the goal to try use that didcom dash rs crate or yeah as i said so there there is this one and there's another one implemented um 
personally, I wouldn't. I think we can implement our own and do a better job. Um, they're, they're extremely generic, uh, very high level parsing, um, not really, I don't know, not really impressed um, with what's going on here. I guess they're good as a reference. And again, it could also be that by the time that Conv2 is stabilized, this would um, be enhanced to a point where there's no need to uh, like implement our own. It would uh, basically satisfy our needs. But right now, there, there are a lot of improvements that could be done. It could also be the fact that we might even use this and maybe start contributing to it. I, I don't know. It's a completely, completely open discussion. Um, so they're all, I guess, valid ideas, and we'll, we're going to all decide together how we're going to um, how we're going to approach this. But as I like to say, this is a problem for another day. Um, it's just an idea worth thinking about. So yeah, that's um, that was pretty much it. Um, any any topic you guys want to cover in the remaining time? I just from my side, thank you. Uh, just right. want to, to thank you for for a moment. I just want to yeah to join the meeting from time to time to have a look uh, how the project is going because that's mm -hmm. uh, possible that in the future we will contribute to that. But yeah, for the moment that will be more in a passive way and not in an active way. That's all right. Uh, hopefully, we can convince you down the line. Uh, you know, to maybe maybe become more active. Again, no, no pressure. I'm just joking. But I, I, we would like, we would really like to see, and this is basically the whole idea, and even why we're going through the refactor. Um, things can be done in a better way, and we want to do them in a better way, uh, even if it takes a lot of work, because there are already implementations out there. There's the AFJ, there's uh, the Python implementations, um, but we can. And we, we want to take advantage of the Rust language to basically make this uh, as performant as we can or, or while not maybe sacrificing sacrificing user experience for it. But um, that's basically the strength of a language. So in the end, even if just using it through a wrapper in a, in a, a different language to FFI or things like that, that's basically our goal. Um, and yeah. We're really glad to see that people are, are tuning in, um, even just you know, listening on on how the project is going. Um, I hope you guys like uh, the direction we have, and yeah, we're always open to suggestions. So, yes, thank you very much. Thank you also for uh, yeah all this um, uh, uh, the thing that you make everything public and uh, very visible to the community. That. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Thank you. All right. Okay, guys. Um, if there's nothing else, then thank you for participating. And uh, thank you for everybody that's going to listen uh, later on. And we can hear each other next week. Take care. Cool. See you guys then. Thanks for running the meeting as well. It was really good. Yep. Have Thank a good you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.